Well, welcome back. I'm Harold Bell, and this is Celebrity Sports Calls with my co-host, Red Auerbach, and our special guest, the Hawk himself, the great Connie Hawkins. I'm going to be asking Connie about other legends that came out of Brooklyn and Boys High, and why is it they never were able to progress any further than the playgrounds? In New York, and of course, there are many, many other legends that come out of Brooklyn, New York, and I'm, I'm thinking about, of course, the, the Zah, Eddie Simmons, of course, the Jackie Jackson. Connie, uh, from where you're sitting in your perspective, who were some of the, the great basketball players that, that, come out, that came out of New York that never really got their just due? There were guys that, you know, Matthew shot for shot on the court and never just got a chance and opportunity to play, Connie. Um, well, there was a lot of them. Uh, I, I think if you go to any city, I think you'll find out in the schoolyard there's a lot of great schoolyard basketball players. I think somebody should come out with a book called Great, great Schoolyard Basketball Players from each city. And it'll be interesting reading. Um, yeah, but they ought to come out with a book as why they should uh, keep their nose clean and go to school. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's why, well, that's why a lot of guys make it from the schoolyard and can't go to the next level because there's another brand of basketball once you keep going up the level, going up the ladder. Connie, what was uh, one of your great moments in sports? Uh, you, like I guess you've had an outstanding career in, in pro basketball. What would you consider your uh, great moment in sports? Well, I've had a chance to think about that. And I used to think it was uh, uh, when I played in the ABA and I scored like you know, 50 some points. But that it, when I think back on it, probably uh, winning the ABA championship. Um, everybody thinks that you know, the championship don't mean nothing because it was the ABA. But I think I still experience that high and that emotional feeling that you get from winning something, like most of the guys in the NBA. I know Red is old hat for him to experience that, but once you get a shot at experiencing that feeling from that, uh, you can never take that away from you. So I had a shot at getting the experience of being a world champion. Well, you're so right. Every championship is, is the best. That's true. Every time you win it, because it proves one thing, no man can do it by himself. When well, you just made a statement that you got 67 points and it wasn't your great thrill, your great thrill was winning as a team. That's right. Yep. And, and that's where it's at. I think that's where it's at. Now, what are you doing nowadays to keep in shape? All right, now, I got a summer basketball program I've been running in Pittsburgh for the past 10 years. And uh, right now, well, all I do now is try and play tennis. I'm in the City Park tournament right now. <laughs> and I'm getting in shape for that. Hey, do you ever get Dick Grove? In uh, Pittsburgh to go out there and uh, help you with your camp. Somebody, somebody said he's still around, but I can't ever find him. Oh, he's around. He does the the uh, radio for uh, the University of Pittsburgh, and he's still in great shape. And I think he'd consider it an honor if you contacted him. That's what somebody said, but I can't ever find him. I'm trying to get in touch with him and try and do that because he came out for the basketball team. They said he was a pretty fairly decent basketball. Well, let me tell you a quick story about Dick Grove. Okay. I was at Duke for a while, and I used to play him one-on-one -on -one back in, the, in 1949 50. Okay. And he was down there. And then when he graduated, he played both sports. He played baseball, and he played for the Fort Wayne Pistons. Okay. And he was a damn good basketball player, but he had to make a choice whether to play baseball or basketball. And the only reason he chose baseball was because in those days, baseball got a little more money, but they had a better pension plan and he could play more years. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and he picked baseball. But if he got out today, I know it because I've talked to him, he would pick basketball. Yeah, I, I, I think that was his first love because when he came out to play, uh, when we was playing with the old ABA, he came out and practiced with us sometime, and he talked about how much he loved basketball then. Mm -hmm. Connie, I'd like to thank you for taking time out to be here on Celebrity Sports Call and uh, keep on keep on doing the great thing that you're doing in Pittsburgh, working with young people. And uh, I know tennis is really keeping you safe, a game that I've taken up. I'm not that great at it, but uh, it's, it has become an outstanding outlet for me, man. And uh, Red and I want to thank you for being our celebrity guest. And looking forward to talking to you well, real thanks soon. thanks for calling me. I appreciate everything. Okay. Okay. All thanks, right. Connie. Right. Okay. That was a great Connie Hawkins. You know, another little-known history fact, guess what? Connie Hawkins is from Brooklyn. And so is Red. 
he's from Brooklyn, New York. That's where Red was born and raised, you know? And uh, that was a very uh, enlightening and uh, great conversation between uh, two superstars, one a player and one a coach. Great, great respect there between the, the two men. Um, so don't go away. We got we got Al Al's and Big House Gains coming up. Uh, so stick around for celebrity sports calls. And um, hey, looking forward to having you back.